Orb presents Hostile Makeover. This is Gary Butterfield. This is Cole Ross. And welcome to Real uh, Season 6 and uh, the home of the New York Slice. Mm, if we can make it here, we can make it anywhere with these slices. These, uh, these are the big slices. Mm. Welcome to the big slicey. <laughs> Windy. <laughs> the Windy Slice. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, boy, it is, it, it is fun. It is refreshing to be in the New York era. Yeah. I like, I love this, uh, the season of the venture brothers. Uh, I like this episode a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, full of chaotic energy. <laughs> it has a very fun, chaotic ending. Yeah. Uh, uh big, big climax, lots of moving parts, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's setting things up. <laughs> We're going to get some, uh, finally get some direction for the monarch. Mm -hmm. Which is weird to wait five seasons to give him something, but like he's got something now. He does, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and they introduce a bunch of fun new characters and stuff. This is great, yeah, to me. Uh, this episode was written by Jackson Public. Originally aired January thirty first, twenty sixteen. Yeah, and it's the start of season six, and it is a reboot for the series. Uh, is how they consider it. This is, follows the first days of the Venture family moving into Venture Tower in Manhattan, following the events of Gargantua two as uh, Rusty uh, takes over for his brother. Um, uh, you know, takes over for JJ and Ventec. He is suddenly a billionaire. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, similar like a Roseanne. Yeah. Thing. Tell some new stories. Um, the boys, when they started season five, they knew they were going to go to Gargantua too in order to set up and reboot the show in New York. Yeah. Something they wanted to do from the, from the start. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're from and New they York. It, yeah. 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 They live in New York. They wanted to do New York stuff, yeah. you know? Um, and they didn't think of this as calling like unnecessary things, even though they, they do clearly <laughs> they talk about getting rid of the, you know, the council and stuff, yeah. uh, but more, they want to clean and kind of put things back where they are meant to be Yeah, uh, a proper place for them to have evolved to. Yeah. Um, so like one of the big deals is for five seasons, the show, I mean, to varying degrees, as much as like it surprisingly rusty gets back backgrounded in a lot of them, but like rusty as the center, as the central of the center of the show, uh, has always been about failure, right? Um, rusty being a failure living in the, uh, footsteps of his, uh, much more successful father, um, in this decrepit rundown, uh, kind of place. They wanted to kind of give the super science angle of this a bit of a shot in the arm. So now instead of living in the shadow of his father, he's living in the shadow of his brother who was named after his father. Uh, yes. but, uh, he's got some success. He has a little bit more, um, uh, just, just a little bit more, uh, just kind of agency in this a little bit more competency. I, I'm struggling to find the right word. Yeah, he's not necessarily like a great scientist now. No. He's just, he's wealthy and he's not struggling. He has and resources. Which that allows them to take, you know, make new kinds of stories. Mm -hmm. Same thing in the reverse with the monarch. The monarch's on the back foot. Mm -hmm. He's now less powerful. I was calling him Dr. Mr. Dr. Mrs. the monarch. <laughs> uh, like he's, he's now the, the secondary. But he's not a doctor. Uh, you know, no, I guess that's true. He'd have a lot more options yeah. if he had formal education. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Doctor, Mrs. The Monarch. Yep. Um, but he's, you know, he's on the back foot. So now we can tell different stories there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a classic shakeup. And it's, I mentioned the Roseanne earlier, but it, it's like that except it's successful. Like yes. you could see what they were going for with Roseanne, but that didn't work. Yeah. Um, this works really well mm -hmm. uh, to me. Related to the Roseanne thing is in the book, you know, I like this because I feel like to a point it's true. Uh, public says that it, because this is a parody show, it's kind of impossible for it to really jump the shark. By making big mm -hmm. swings like this, there are decisions they could do. Like, I'm sure that there are people who really dislike Sergeant Hatred who saw him replacing Brock to a degree as a, as jumping the shark. But like something like this ki kind of, you know, doesn't necessarily break the spirit of it too much because of the nature mm -hmm. of the show. Yeah, I agree. Uh, in, in, a, in a general sense, it feels pretty uh, rubbery, yeah. you know, and, and pliable. Um. In the book, Doc talks a little bit how season five might have suffered for being too easy to produce. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> season six was harder, but they both seem to agree that season six is a return to form. 
Yeah. Uh, season, six, season six was tough. They were short staffed. They had to design an entire new world, which means painting all kinds of new backgrounds, new characters and stuff. And they had the whole business with like, is Gargantua a premiere or a special? Yeah. Uh, is it a big board or a whiteboard uh, <laughs> kind of thing that they, they dealt with that we talked about last episode? Yeah. Um, so season six was not plotted out. And so they just kind of pl- split up the episodes and said, all right, we're just going to v- vaguely just explore new stories in this world, you know, in, in New mm-hmm. York and uh, the setting. And I think that uh, helps. I think that uh, not necessarily plotting things helps them um, make more fun stuff. It gave us the monster of the week uh, kind of a status yeah. of this. While the subplots move forward in a way that, uh, to me, season six and seven of the show kind of feel more like a TV show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a weird thing to say. Like, there's still Monster of the Week, especially this season, but they're advancing the monarch blue morpho intrigue. Yeah. They're advancing character relationships and stuff in a way that feels much more confident to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, this There's some, you know, a little bit of chaotic charm that's lost with yeah. that, right? And it's the reason why we don't just get like a random order the triad episode Mm -hmm. you know uh but it's still uh it's so we did lose some things but it's cool it's an advantage in in a lot of other ways uh they wrote it in order uh splitting up the episodes kind of ping-ponging yeah uh together and i like that it's written in order as well Mm -hmm. because there was some weirdness about some old episodes which i did not realize the cause that weirdness until we got behind the scenes information Mm -hmm. and they were like oh this was written last but we knew all these things we had to set up so it's necessarily weird and crowded yeah they just did an awful lot of like (laughs) we had to do a bunch of weird borrowing it's like a like a uh just just real shifty accounting uh yes <laughs> with like what detail went where you know like okay like the net, like the fact that we wrote this late episode first means that we're gonna borrow a bunch of time from this early one in order to set up for that uh which i yeah. think is you know not necessarily a good play cook the books yeah so to speak <laughs> uh, uh they talk about this is uh might it's a it's a really tight race and <laughs> Every single time they, they they outdo themselves, this might be the least useful commentary. Yeah, yeah. Except they're not joking. Like it's not like like they're just goofing around. Mm-hmm. They just don't talk about the episode. No, no, like, at all. I don't think they ever say anything that's going on on screen or reference it. No, no. Like at, like at one point, um, uh, they see a uh, Footlocker. Like a uh, pirate captain goes through mm-hmm. Box Footlocker to get a tranquilizer gun, and that reminds him to talk to tell a story about how he uh, how doc peed in his in, in his footlocker <laughs> yeah doc, doc used to pee in everything yeah uh he was a night pisser and he used to pee in like his parents closet and stuff yeah yeah it's a thing and the story is interesting and vulnerable like i like that he told it mm-hmm. you know in endeared him to me but it, it certainly like took up a lot of time in this commentary <laughs> jackson even says i'm surprised we didn't work out bedwetting into the uh in, in, into into the, the story dean. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it reminds me, I have a friend who, uh, I've, I've told this story before, but I always think it's very funny, mm-hmm. who uh, had a dream, like he got up, uh, he woke up, he was kneeling on his bed, peeing on his pillow, and he had a dream that another friend told him it was okay, and he was at a <laughs> journal. He got permission. Which is so weird. <laughs> he got dream permission from John Ugolini. Um <laughs> that's so bizarre yeah huh. like what is your relationship with john at that point like it's not you know i'll be i've been in a relationship before and then like had a dream where i had a fight with my significant other and uh-huh. i'm you know sentient so i understand that's not real and it doesn't mean anything <laughs> but you're not like mad at them for something they did in a dream yeah i'm, I'm sapient i'm not like scared <laughs> that you know i understand uh but if somebody is just like hey man it's cool that's a urinal you can pee on it. it's a urinal it would be weird like I'd feel a little weird about that person, you know. <laughs> like, what a fucked up thing to tell me to do. Yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> right, right in the right in the pillow as well. It's mm. the last place you want urine on the bed. No, oh, I know. I mean, I, like at least that's better. Than, I mean, unless there's like a mattress, you know, mattress protector. Like at least you can take the pillow off and wash it separately. You know, that's like, true. Getting getting that's a true. getting a bunch of piss out of a big heavy mattress would be would be a rough shake. I think. To get a hill giant to wring it out like a rag. <laughs> Just get, get, get Paul Bunyan over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, to, to get Grognock to come over here and do me a solid. <laughs> Just because Grognock have truck doesn't mean Grognock help move. 
Uh, <laughs> Grobnock have Grobnock don't have many options for transport. <laughs> Only yeah. truck big enough. This is the biggest car Grobnock could afford. <laughs> Even the big big need to drive a vehicle. <laughs> uh, uh, anywho, anyway. Uh, they, they talked a little bit about this episode uh, being a little bit of a struggle because originally they started with the concept of moving to a new place mm-hmm. and then they had to add some more plot yeah. to it, uh, which they did. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a lot of just setting up new stuff, but things also do happen. Yeah. You know, s- f- fish out of water is a thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's get into it. Let's do. Uh, the cold open picks up right after the, uh, like, the promo epilogue. Uh, for Gargantua, mm-hmm. uh, you know, after Rusty gets the uh, the news about his inheritance, uh, we have Rusty uh, passed out, like, on the ground. His eyes are wide open, and he's got a big old grin because he just looked at the will. Um, and, mm-hmm. you know, exposition, Dean picks it up, and, you know, and then the the, the lawyer comes down and says, Wakey, wakey, Dr. Venture, you're, you're about to be a very rich man. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and... Like always, we get a, a special opening for all of the, the seasons. This one, instead of being a variation or having different people running, it's a, a CNC Music Factory <laughs> song about how Rusty's back now. Uh, <laughs> Even his license plate says it. <laughs> no, Rusty's back. It's, it's a very funny song. <laughs> Rusty's back. But you already knew that. <laughs> yeah, but you already knew that. Uh, they talk about in the, the commentary how uh, J.G. Thrill, Thurwell uh, used to resent Mm-hmm. Like they'd be like, "Hey man, you got to write something you hate," and now it's like a musical challenge for him. <laughs> yeah, like was he, he hires people. Like it's a it's a, it's a puzzle almost. And yeah. then, you know, and I'm kind of impressed that he's able to do this kind of style parody. You know, yeah, it it it's a it sounds exactly like uh, what the song they play at the the gay steel mill. I uh, want to make you sweat. You, know, you mean? Like, um, yeah, it sounds exactly. Everybody like dance that. now. Bump 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 bump. No. Yeah, it's back now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that kind of thing. <laughs> there's no uh, dialogue during this part it's just the song and showing a little montage of them uh having fun yeah you know seeing the city getting in uh rusty fires the entire board for, <laughs> for no real reason <laughs> like come on yeah. uh, and, and i love the funny. i love the way that this ripples throughout the entire season <laughs> yep the original the reason why this is in the cold open is because an original draft of this had one of those uh people swearing vengeance Ooh. Uh, for being fired uh doc talks or jackson talks about that yeah. but he gave up that that plot yeah yeah so. uh <laughs> I, I almost wish he didn't fire them i wish everybody quit because they weren't uh confident in his leadership you know yeah but yeah him just being like i pete can do this <laughs> like, i don't, know <laughs> and I don't have to pay him anything yeah yeah <laughs> The fact that he's still a miser is fun. It's ridiculous, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, also ridiculous. Uh, it kind of goes away once his uh, character model gets standardized, but I love Hank's oligarch clothes. Yeah, yeah. His, his Justin Bieber thing. They, they <laughs> Brock makes fun of it later, and it's real great. Yeah. It just looks looks like shit. <laughs> um, the, uh, so uh, we start off here. They're having breakfast. Uh, the J-Bot is about uh it made the family breakfast and rusty is very appreciative of the j-bot while helpers looking on just like very <laughs> sad and freaking out he just beeps uh, out man his obsolescence <laughs> um and so everybody's gonna rain down what they're gonna do with their day uh hatred's gonna go run a security check on the perimeter uh, uh he says oh you know this but it's like a, a boy scout jamboree could uh could, could secure this place better and rusty yeah, gives like, him you know. he gives him yeah. a couple burns and rusty even says don't burn down my house while you're doing it yeah <laughs> um the uh hank says he's gonna live the idle life of play of a playboy uh there's also a cut scene from this where rusty was supposed to tell him to go get a job mm-hmm. which plays into the 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 epilogue that they hit online yeah Stop it. This isn't even on the DVD. Stop, Stop it. Stop doing that, guys. <laughs> uh, Dean's going to go to college. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. going to uh, go to... Gonna... <laughs> I love the way his specificity. I'm going to go to the Stuyvesant University Uptown Campus. Yeah. Uh, this is their... <laughs> <laughs> there's their, their uh their stand in for uh for columbia uh university mm-hmm. uh for this yeah uh he asked the phone for directions but all the j phones uh have jj's junior's voice <laughs> uh very funny go north four blocks <laughs> yeah, it's very, very funny uh that would be great <laughs> uh, uh probably uh pretty pretty high up there in my in my uh in the running for my favorite line of the season uh is mm-hmm. hank calls uh calls off from the pool deck you know up on the roof says hey pop pretty much the avengers are here 
Uh, pretty much the Avengers is good. It's so good. Uh, and I love that they're, he's just aware of that. Yep. Uh, Rusty goes to check it out, and this is the Crusaders Action League, uh, <laughs> which is our Avengers or yeah. Justice League uh, stand-in. You know, the idea here is like, oh, they're in New York now. They're not in the sticks. There's real superheroes. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we got Stars and Garters, who is uh, Captain America wearing like a sexy garter outfit from the waist down. Mm-hmm. Uh, Oriana, who ends up being the most important of these. Yes. Uh, really enough, who is an Amazon take on uh, Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, down to your real Amazons uh, cut off one of their breasts. So they could... Uh, yeah. Um, and yeah. Brock doesn't mind it, you know? <laughs> no, he, he's, he doesn't mind. He wants to do you. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, and then uh, one of the things I love is we don't learn their names right away. Yeah. But if you know how the boys do pun names, you can guess them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when I saw Stars and Garters, I was like, oh, that's good, you know? Yeah. And then Warriana, I couldn't guess. Because yeah. it's... Yeah, that's kind of generic. But Fallen Archer, I guess, as well, which I really love. <laughs> yeah. Hawkeye, who shoots bows and arrow with feet at the end, uh-huh. who are sentient and animate. Later, there's a scene where they're hopping back into his quiver. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are these things? <laughs> do, do, do they write songs? <laughs> so good. It's so good. I love the fallen archer. And they have different effects too. Like he, yeah. he's got he's got the two left feet arrows, which will tie somebody up. Uh and mm-hmm. it's uh and it's again uh for, you know from last time. Uh it's 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 uh Larry Murphy uh doing the voice yeah. on this. And when he starts giving out the uh the rushed uh sales pitch, you know, the the the, the guy mm-hmm. shows up trying to trying to sell you magazines so that oh, you can I send. Am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's real cute. Yeah, uh, and Rusty rejects this, of course, because whenever anyone offers to help Rusty, no. it's like, <laughs> yeah, I don't need this. Yeah, and they uh, say, "Oh, you're in New York, you know. Just it's not like out in the sticks. There are actual villains, so you need, uh, you need uh, actual heroes to protect you as well." And I love that they're charging money, like they have a gold package and a silver package mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, and mm-hmm. Warriana points across the street uh, to this tower. What's it? It's like Topher Tower or something like that. Toseps. Yeah, I, I can't remember exactly yeah. what it is. It's, uh, it's a stand-in for Trump Tower. Yeah. Uh, in in the thing, and uh, it's where a lot of guild people live, but also Warriana lives there. Yeah. It's kind of like a place for uh, enhanced beings, like yes. science heroes. Yeah. Hadrian uh, walks up and presents some OSI ID. Yeah. And it's just like, uh, you know, no, he's under my protection. Uh, and the Crusader Action League is like, uh, you know, wait to do your research. research. <laughs> you <laughs> you know? fall, fallen Archer. You know? Oh, gosh. It was Stars and Garters who didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Because that reveals that he's the guy who works uh, or goes to the college with uh, the Brown Widow. He teaches there. His name's Tosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tosh. It was, wait to do your research, Tosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, breakfast is happening elsewhere. Uh, over at the monarch household again in their dilapidated mansion um mm-hmm. doctor my wife as uh, the monarch refers to her uh which is good um is uh has is at a meeting she had to leave at dawn to go do some council stuff and 21 is reading uh reading the newspaper and kind of uh, in the background managing their contractor manolo uh i would yeah. die for manolo <laughs> i know a lot too is uh, is pocket coming through in the background no, I was distracted by my own by my own cats who were doing their own uh, hijinks. Yeah, he's he's got a toy in his mouth, so he's been he's doing that. Uh, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> like he's just trying to get my attention, but it sounds like the saddest thing that's ever been. Oh yeah, yeah. Dottie does that. She goes. She she parades around the house um, yep. with uh, with the mouse in her mouth. You know, the toy mouse in her mouth, just making this most wretched sad sound. <laughs> he's, uh, he's doing it now. So just if if it if it sounds like I'm just like sport torturing my cat. Uh huh. While recording, I'm not. No, in fact, you're doing a nice thing because you are not. Uh, you are not ending his victory parade. Yeah, yeah. I could. I could take this away from him at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not cutting any of this. I love him. Oh no, no, it's good. I, I will. I will play fetch with him after we record as well. Yeah. Uh, if anyone's like, oh, just play with him. He wants to play, and I'm like, I know. <laughs> I'm like, How else do I afford uh, gross meat shreds for him? <laughs> Um, oh man uh but uh 21 speaks portuguese to manolo uh it's very good mm-hmm. he's he learned it on rosetta stone you know mm-hmm. uh, even though uh uno is not uh he's henchman uno but uno is not portuguese for one it's no Moon. so uh yeah. uh yeah uh He's hiding a newspaper. Uh, the monarch's like, why are you hiding it? Oh, is it because of this? Uh, and they look at the back. There's a little throwaway joke. Uh, I can't remember what it is. Swing but it's really hunt. because it has Rusty's windfall. 
Yeah, I didn't get it. Is this Swing Heil is on it? I I figured it was yeah, it, it was uh um Unterland playing baseball or something like that. I don't know if there's Underland. I there's a little aside about it in the commentary as well. Yeah, um, like a weird little like ironic Nazism <laughs> thing, and Doc like meaningfully is like stop it. He's yeah. not a Nazi, you know. <laughs> No idea. Um, yeah, but, uh, you know, just uh, 21 is trying to protect <laughs> trying to protect his boss from the bad news about his uh, nemesis, about Rusty's windfall. Uh, but the monarch already knows, and uh, he uh, has plans to do something about it. Uh, you know, his, they don't have the resources to arch right now, but they can go and reconnoiter. Yeah. Yep. Uh, up in the meteor base, the Council of 13, which needs more members, is doing their first meeting. Uh, the radical left wonders where the sovereign is, you know, uh, it's like, I'll take care of it. Killinger, Killinger, Killinger. He's not it's Beetlejuice. Lunatic. You. <laughs> lunatic. Like, uh, it's very good. Uh, watching Ward pop in and say, Killinger is done. Like mm-hmm. they left a charter. You guys need to figure this out on your own. Yeah. And they mentioned that the guild in the early days didn't even have a sovereign. You know, yeah, they they rule by committee. This stuff is all uh, interesting to me in a source book way, but I think it's a little bit boring. Yeah, these yeah. moving parts. Like out of the the plot lines of this these two seasons, the guild getting its thirteen members and people vying for guild seats mm-hmm. is is a little uh, light on humor to me. I, I mean, like, as a as a framework to introduce us to new weirdos, I enjoy it. But the yes. end result, like I'm not necessarily invested in who ends up on this council. Right. And and the the scenes of discussing the rules. Yeah. You know, like I like that we learn what the peril partnership is mm-hmm. and stuff, but all of the weird inter guild politics stuff with the peril partnership is not particularly interesting to me. Yeah. You know, as a as a thing. Other I'm glad that I know it, but watching it presented is not that fun, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Phantom Limb is not on board with the idea of ruling by committee. He thinks that they need a strong leader, but Dr. Mrs. the Monarch rightfully points out our last um, a strong leader nearly killed all of us. So, you know, maybe that's not the best way to go. Uh, regardless, they need to uh, boost morale. Uh, currently, rumors yes. are getting out that uh, leadership is in disarray on uh, radical left. Um, suggest, hey, we need to go and um, uh, hold like a town hall meeting just to get out in front of some of this stuff before it gets out of our hands. Yeah. So they'd agree to do that. Um, down at uh, Stoy Vincent University. Uh, Dean runs into the Brown Widow, who's giving a tour. He's there late because uh, transit's confusing. And Brown Widow knows him. Uh, mm-hmm. He's in his civilian garb at this point, but he, he's not trying to keep a secret identity as Brown Widow at all. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, I bet you you're that venture kid. I'm Rusty. <laughs> yeah, you know? I'm Rusty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tosh throws a can at him. Uh, and we, this is stars and garters. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a jerk. He teaches there as a gym teacher. Uh, Captain America could totally be a gym teacher. Uh, and we get this beautiful little, like I like in the commentary docs, like I was jealous of this. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very funny. Um, it's very true to the source too, right? Like, uh, yeah, the, the Spider-Man yeah. monologue, you know, you know, time slows down. Like, Oh, what do I do? Uh, spider sense. Blah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, could, I could dodge it, but then that might out me. I could spin a web of, web of any size and like the, the camera's going down to different parts of his body, how he could change it. Yeah. And, and, just, and, and, and it takes too long thinking about it. Yeah. D- D- Dean points out like, are, are you okay? <laughs> it yeah. yeah. I can't why he's doing this. Yeah. It's very funny. It hits him and he instinctually uh, fills his pants with web. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, uh, I like Tasha's Tosh. line. <laughs> Mark Knopfler filled his pants. Pants again. Again, uh, yes. And, uh, it keeps happening. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's all that we get at Dean this time, which is unfortunate, but it's a good scene. Yeah, he uh, he says, you know, I, I, I didn't actually fill my pants, and Dean's like, oh, I remember you now. <laughs> but that's really, really it. Yeah. Yeah, that, the, the, the pants thing is what reminded Dean. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, back at Venture Tower, uh, Rusty is impatiently going through the motions of, uh, these charity, um, photo ops, taking photos Mm -hmm. with different charities, uh, with just a parade of giant checks. Um, uh, Mm -hmm. they point out in the, uh, in the commentary that if this was live action, the giant checkbook would have really sold. I kind of didn't notice that they were pulling the giant checks out of a, out of a giant checkbook. Uh, so it was funny, but they don't, uh, it would be, it, it'd like be a funny Parks and Rec joke or something. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, I love the anecdote and the thing about finding those giant checks in dumpsters. And like <laughs> the guy trying to shake down Doc. Yeah. Like, hey, and you got a piece of that for me? <laughs> it's, like, it's, a dumpster. It's, a, it's, a, it's not a real check. I don't take it to Giant Bank. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's such a funny like getting shook down anecdote oh like, god <laughs> um i i love this the, the charities he's doing it for are, are good mm-hmm. as well yeah funny. i love uh he's like do i have to do this and pirate captain's like no i have to go over to our you know our brooklyn branch mm-hmm. i wouldn't have to if you hadn't fired everyone <laughs> like it's just ridiculous that he's just like no no, no we just have our cast yeah <laughs> And just tell yeah. Pirate Captain can do everything. <laughs> we streamlined operations so much that all of the mining is done by one Australian man. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, uh, the Monarch and uh, 21 arrive uh, with Henchman Uno. Uh, they, or they get a ride over there. Uh, oh, no, that's later. This is the time they took transit. Yes. Um, and they're there as New York weirdos. Uh, the Monarch is a living statue of the Statue of Liberty, and 21 is naked cowboy. Uh, mm-hmm. These are things that happen in New York and L.A.? Yep. And walking down the street. And to a lesser extent, some other cities, like every once in a while, there'll be a living statue in Portland. Yeah. It's rare. Uh, uh, Sixth Street in Austin. There's a, there, there, there are people, like, there's a guy with a parrot who will just like sidle up next to you and, tr- you know, mm-hmm. like take, you know, take a photo or, you know, like, hey, take mm-hmm. a selfie with me with this parrot and pay me money, please. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just for, for parrots. Uh, people mm-hmm. with pot belly pigs mm-hmm. on, uh, on leashes, stuff like that. Yeah. City weirdos. Cindy weirdos, uh, performers, uh, uh, buskers. I almost said grifters, which is un- uncharitable. Yeah, different. Yeah. Uh, those are ayahuasca enthusiasts from California. <laughs> um, the uh, the naked cowboy, who is 21, starts singing, uh, disguising his singing as him casing the joint. Yes. So which security guards there are and how they use a key card system for ID, but he lifted one off of a guard. Mm-hmm. Um, but pirate captain sees this as he's getting into his car and demands to know where 21 got, got it. If you just figuring like, yeah, something, something's amiss with this. Uh, the monarch immediately darts him, which causes him to relapse into his nasty dart addiction. Yeah. He loves dart. I uh, I like the dart addiction. I feel a little bit bad that they're redoing it. Yeah. You know, it just, it's, they've already done the joke, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so back, uh, the, the guild council is having their town hall. Everyone is real pissed. <laughs> Uh, we get some weirdos in the audience. I love uh, Purple Rose. Purple Rose is so good. <laughs> Purple Rose is my favorite. Uh, dot a, com uh, asked for a more diverse council at one point, and is, and somebody uh, you know pops up who is who is uh, African American, uh, who's like more more people of color, and the Purple Rose is like and more people of cover color, <laughs> yeah. and he is he's Pete Rose but purple, and that's the entirety of his whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh god uh having lived in cincinnati for you know for several years the torn relationship with pete rose um uh, yeah that, 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 that just kind of goes his his disgrace and the conflict between people who want him back you know like just in the yeah. in the halls of baseball or whatever it's a it's an interesting piece of history and also disgrace, he has the, yeah. the, the the dorkiest haircut uh the imaginable oh yeah yeah famous for it <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, everyone's upset about this. Um, and, uh, the phantom limb tries to be the sovereign, like use the sovereign computer program, but Phineas Phage is there and it's like, no way. <laughs> yes. you know? I was there when the, Phine- when the sovereign went rogue and so was she, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. uh, everyone is pissed. Yeah. And this is where Dr. Miss and the monarch makes her emergency executive decision saying, Hey, the guild's going to operate without a sovereign. Um, and yeah. you know, the, the crowd isn't really won back by that. No, uh, they're going to hold elections yeah. and, uh, this is, this is, uh, again, that guild stuff, like it's in disarray. Yeah. Um, so she tries to reassure everybody and that scene just kind of ends. Uh, and we cut over to, uh, Rusty getting back home. Uh, <laughs> like this helper offers him a pipe and some slippers, uh, yes, and, <laughs> which brings brings a little bit of uh, kind of insight into this uh because uh uh like helper is kind of acting like he's you know still serving jonas like jonas would mm-hmm. absolutely be the person who wants a pipe in his slippers because he's the you know the mid-century all-american man kind of guy uh, no mm-hmm. he wants the uh, like like rusty wants to be pampered he wants the j-bot with his red moco cooler <laughs> yeah yeah well it's, it's interesting because uh, you know, like helper never served, uh, yeah, I suppose, yeah, I suppose you're right. You know? Yeah. 
I, I was thinking about it as just a parallel with uh, Helper and, and J-Bot and then uh, immediately Hatred and Brock. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, there, there's, a, there's a parallel there. Like, uh, Rusty wants the, the executive glass. Yes. Stuff. J-Bot gives him a red mogul cooler, which, again, everyone listening to this is running out of time to make the show very popular, so it makes sense for us to do <laughs> an event where we try Rusty drinks. <laughs> if you want that, you really need to start spreading the word. <laughs> like, this show does okay, but it not not drink red mogul cooler okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, do it. this is probably the most twisted and tortured version of like holding somebody hostage like or, or like a ransom <laughs> like a big guppy. like the the patreon goal where we end guppy <laughs> which we don't tell anybody about <laughs> like, we're getting closer every day um, yeah. oh uh, man uh, so he walks in the living room and Hank has uh, big. Yep, he big. he bigged the apartment. <laughs> yeah, he bigged. He went, he went on a on a a, a shopping spree. Uh, I love this so much. Uh, cool behind the scenes stuff. Originally, this came back with really crappy animation, which is a bunch of boxes marked toys. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's, a, that's such a huge fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they're they're uh, one of their like animation directors had to like basically. Like work real hard to actually draw this background. Yeah, like hand uh, hand paint the uh, the arcade machines and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, very good. <laughs> a guy walks out, a little guy, and he's like, "Who's that?" It's the amazing Flippo. <laughs> he's drinking trampoline lessons. <laughs> uh, and Rusty thinks that he bought a gigantic stuffed uh, stuffed giraffe, but no, it's an actual giraffe from the Bronx Zoo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's Dean's. It's Mister Reachmore. <laughs> Like, and Dean is immediately yeah, attached to Mr. Ricci. Ricci has evolved into Reachmore. I love, I, I love Mr. Reachmore. I love Mr. Reachmore as well. There was going to be, there's a deleted scene that's a tag mm-hmm. of the bringing him back to the zoo. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, uh, the elevator dings and hatred's like, you're expecting company doc. You know, he, he thinks that uh, it's a big thing. So he draws his gun and it's Brock. Uh, reporting for duty he's the bodyguard now because the ventures are in the big league yeah uh which uh they could have found a more delicate way to handle that with hatred probably right oh yeah this is this is a real fuck you to hatred uh hatred ends up at the hover quarters asking you know talking to hunter gatherers uh and he's like why am i being reassigned i'm not good for a desk job you mm-hmm. know i need to be in the field <laughs> no dice the only unassigned scientist we got right now is jimmy jigawad out of deer park texas he's a nine-year-old boy genius and he's cute as a button you're the last person i'm putting on him <laughs> You are the last person I'm putting on him. Uh, you know, hatred has to take a dust job or leave the OSI. Yeah. Uh, at this point, uh, it's going to turn out he's going to leave the OSI. Yeah. Um, Brock goes to settle into his room uh, here, and the pirate captain is rooting through his footlocker uh, for darts uh, for a dart gun, which he shoves into his pants. Yes. Uh, which he immediately gets into the elevator and uh, uh, literally shoots up. <laughs> it just uh, points it at his neck and says, Oh yeah, show me what you got, you beautiful black bitch. <laughs> Whisper yeah. sweet nothings Whisper into me here. <laughs> yeah, darts himself. Yeah. Uh, here. Uh cool detail from the art book is that uh the rooms that were here used to belong to different uh different members of JJ's crew. Yeah. So Hank is in so, uh, like, is in Ned's place. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a dress like a, a kid's room. And then Dean was in a uh, rocket's room who was like a four year old super genius. Mm-hmm. We've never seen rocket do this no. or anything, but the idea that they came up with that background, like gives it a really nice sense. Yeah. You know, like of lore. <laughs> and it, and you know? both, both of those kind of fit you know, the different personalities yeah. of the two. Yeah. It's good. It's great. Uh, so Brock and Rusty take off in their, their jet, uh, <laughs> causing a sonic boom that blasts out the windows of the guild tower. Uh, there's no need to. And they're just going to another area of the city. Yeah. Like you, you could have taken a car, dude. Um, this, uh, th- this Enzo thing, I, I want to not like this because it's so silly uh-huh. and doesn't really go anywhere, but it's very funny. Oh, it's so good. It's a, yeah, it, 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 it's just a perfect little like non sequitur joke. Uh, yeah. and, and like the, the, the misdirection around that is very good. Like Rusty is very uncharacteristically, um, uh, serious saying like, Oh, yeah. we need to go settle a score with the Italian. Um, yeah. and they you go taking the car doc, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, cars are for millionaires. Yeah. Uh, and you know, he comes in. Enzo is like, you have a lot of nerve showing up here. He locks the door, <laughs> you know, uh, he came to make things right. Uh, and so spits in his face. Mm-hmm. He says, uh, bring me the ambassador. 
<laughs> yeah, bring me the ambassador. <laughs> Enzo spits in his face and Brock pulls his knife. He's no Brock. It's a Sicilian's thing. <laughs> the no money come between brothers. <laughs> like, where this? It reminds me of Spanakopita, like this weird yeah. rusty subculture. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> just, just he's no. like he's so oblivious in a lot of situations, but like somehow in this in this tailor shop, he is you know equals with this uh, craftsman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Enzo comes out with the ambassador, which was a speed suit that Rusty uh, commissioned and never paid for. <laughs> at this point, uh, Br- Brock's really, uh, real mad uh, at him. And at one point, like Rusty's like, "Forgive him, Enzo," and then <laughs> Enzo just spits in his face because that's a Sicilian thing. <laughs> I love that. It's a Sicilian thing. Don't worry. Yeah, good, oh. good bit of New York, New Yorkiana. <laughs> um so <laughs> elsewhere uh, back at the uh the mansion dr uh dr miss the monarch is uh talking uh, talking with the rest of the council over video chat uh and they say you know it really wasn't worth the peas in the rabble if we want to mm-hmm. make this uh this the, this big swing in the guild we're going to need the new york chapter on our side yeah uh you know they're always aloof they threaten to secede but Dr. And Mrs. The Monarch thinks they can do it on, get them on their side if they land just one big fish, uh, which is foreshadowing. Phantom Moon says, I've, I've arranged a meeting between you and Wide Whale, yeah. uh, who is going to be a major character uh, going forward. Their second attempt this- at a kingpin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like more kingpin-y than the last kingpin. Yeah. I would say the monster or so. But uh, yeah, very kingpin-y. Yeah. Uh, so Dr. And Mrs. The Monarch sadly has to leave. Uh, Monarch is like, oh, no, it's good, honey. Yeah, you know, I don't mind. I'll just stay home. But really, he's going to get back to arching. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the commute is terrible. They have to take the path train, which sucks. Uh, it's, yeah, I've, I've done that. Um, and uh, they do. Uh, they don't really have any henchmen. They don't have a cocoon. Uh, but then when they realize as Manolo goes to uh, goes to leave for the end of the day, like, oh, wait, uh, Manolo, can we get can we get a ride? Uh, so yeah. this is where they get henchman Uno. And to know. Uh, Hank asks Brock if he can borrow some binoculars to look for some naked ladies on the roof. I love Brock like, <laughs> sure. <laughs> your, your mores are outdated, Brock. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, he's your relic, Brock. Uh, and I just love him. Just oh, can't every time I look at you, I want to wring your neck. <laughs> like, no, stop dressing like that, Hank. <laughs> that um, beaver kid is such a punk. <laughs> It's, it's very good. Yeah. Uh, Hank counters with like chicks dig him, and Brock says, "No, no, no, chicks dig guys with confidence." You know, like Steve McQueen. Yeah. He goes, "Who?" And Brock's like, "Ugh." Yeah. You know, like very cute. This has a payoff that they decided to hide online. Yeah, yeah, um, it. it's good payoff. Uh, but yeah. uh, you know, hatred is watching through uh, the binoculars uh, outside as Manolo is dropping twenty one and the Monarch off. Uh, you know, they are dressed up as ven- venture guards. Yes. Uh, up in Wide Whale's uh, penthouse, uh, he me- he meets with Dr. and Mrs. the Monarch. I love his uh, sea lice. Yep. <laughs> really good. His barnacle butler. Um, yeah. yep. oh. Really good. Uh, Wide Whale is a pun. Uh, a whale is a type of tie, I think, or a part of a tie. Hmm. Right? Uh, and he looks like a whale. Yeah. So that is... Uh, that is the, the the pun. That is uh, that that is meaningful uh, for uh, what's going to happen here. Uh, the fact that he is a human sea creature hybrid, um, yes, and everything is uh, is is sea creature themed. Um, but Wybell says, you know, oh, the Phantom Limb has already offered me a seat on your council. Um, I invited you, you over, Doctor Mrs. the Monarch, for a more personal arrangement. Uh, and he puts his hand on her thigh like a like a real creep, giving us a misdirection yeah. about the nature of what he's asking he's for. Yeah, yeah. He's not. Uh, he, uh, you know, she's like, we'd like to offer you a space on the council. Tries to butter him up, mm-hmm. and he's like, no, 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 Phantom Limb already offered me that. But yeah. he's like, more. Um, up on the roof of Venture Tower, uh, Hank is looking on. Uh, he uh, he sees Doctor Mrs. the Monarch. He's like, oh, I know her, mm-hmm. and then just flips over. <laughs> he doesn't care. Yeah. Uh, just flips over, and he sees a young woman uh, jump into a pool and immediately start floating face down, seemingly dead. Yeah, and we're in like an action climax now. Yes. Place. Uh, again, you know Jackson does good action. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, The chaos of this moving forward is really good. Yeah, it cuts around. So uh, Hank is worried about this. um, And uh, the danger is escalating because 21 and the monarch are getting into the elevator. Uh, There's a retina scanner. You know, it wasn't just going to be as easy as getting into the elevator. The monarch tries it, but of course it doesn't work and it locks them in. (laughs) Uh, And it locks them in uh, (laughs) with the pirate captain. Uh, this, this This is great. He says, welcome to hell, fellas. Like there's this red light as the alarm goes off. <laughs> I don't think there's something about like 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 looking to somebody and saying "Welcome to Hell" that I just love. How do I love "Welcome to Hell"? <laughs> I saw a restaurant where you say that instead of like "May I take your order?" <laughs> Welcome to Hell. <laughs> just oh god 21's immediate reaction. Oh my god, we're locked in an elevator with the devil, just like that movie Devil. Yeah, yeah, uh, very, very good. Uh, it's the kind of thing that like. I, I don't like Pirate Captain backsliding that much. Like, mm-hmm. I prefer the kind of joke from Action Johnny. Yeah. But I like getting some Action Johnny energy. <laughs> I, I, know, I know it's not uh, as sensitive as it could be, mm-hmm. but having fun with the strung out unpredictability of, like, junkies uh-huh. is, is, is a source of amusement to me in fiction sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like, in, uh, in Breaking Bad, you know, the, the part where uh, Jesse has to get into that house where he's doing jobs with Mike? <laughs> And he does it where he's like, I know meth heads. Yeah. And he goes d- and starts digging. <laughs> yep. What are you, you digging know, for? Like, you know. <laughs> you know. How, how deep does it go? I don't know. It's pretty deep. And he just gets <laughs> trying to take over digging. <laughs> like, it's very funny to me. Like, it's a, it ends up being a tense scene after that. But, like, yeah. I don't know. Strung out weirdos are, are like, they can be scary mm-hmm. to me for sure. But uh, when played for humor, it works for me. <laughs> the, the idea uh, of, like, Mandy. <laughs> Um, the, uh, the, the, the wrestler and it's always sunny. <laughs> yes. God, I love the, re- I love, uh, what is his name? I, uh, and I, it's like the, the mangler or something like that. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's so good. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, like wait, so you funny. have, you have kids. Uh, not anymore. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> it's always funny. Is really good at that. That kind of, of feeling. Yeah. <laughs> We're in the Jersey shore and the doctor comes up and starts just making out with the patient. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a dog walking in the background. Oh, it's so good. Oh, man. Uh, I love or when they go to the the guy who they know under the bridge, and the two people fucking behind. <laughs> the uh the screen and there's the guy playing video games like really angrily uh-huh. <laughs> it reminds me of uh taquito's roommate in the billion dollar movie yeah yeah taquito's roommate <laughs> like don't look at him <laughs> <laughs> just all of these uh, uh just so just funny. just background characters like just uh, uh just the, oh yeah they, they would be perfectly at home in those just terrible parties in blue velvet <laughs> yeah well and it's like it this is i'm not trying to you know shift the conversation but i was at a lot of scary adult parties oh yeah yeah as a kid. like there, there there's a relatableness to this mm-hmm. like i had to go hang out with my dad's weird friends yeah and it was not unlike that uh, it's just very well observed yeah the, the For, forget well. about the unpredictability of people who are on hard drugs like try being around very drunk adults when you're young oh yeah yeah that's a nightmare yeah yeah you're legal to be drunk around your kids Ugh. um the uh so hank runs past brock to borrow his grapple gun you know, Hank does, or Rock barely notices to shoot a line and rescue uh, the girl in the swimming pool. Yeah. Uh, this, of course, creates a lot of noise um, and uh, stars and garters. Uh, here's this. He calls for backup saying, hey, come to uh, <laughs> come to uh, Columbus Circle. We have shots fired. Oriana says, oh, it's coming from the venture place. And stars and garters <laughs> are like, no, disregard. They're not paying customers. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> uh, but that's that's uh, stars and garters. Oriana and Fallen Archer are still still in it to be heroes yeah uh because they see brock try to stop hank but it looks like he throws him off the roof (laughs) Uh, so they're gonna stop him from killing that child hank's about to go after him uh but then fallen archer with the foot arrows start hitting him in the face (laughs) uh you're at the mercy of the fallen archer uh he gets the the kill eye pulls his knife (laughs) yeah starts running with the archer he's he's foaming at the mouth (laughs) it's really good it's been it it does feel like a re-rack like it's been a while since yeah uh, that, Brock's gone berserk mode. Yeah. Uh, and he's about to get him. He's about to get the fallen archer, but stars and garters stops him. You know, it's a big flashy scene, you know, just cap captain America with the shield kind of deal. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, he is an actual superhero. He gives Brock a, a, a fucking beat down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, they're, they're, they're fighting. It's mm-hmm. a fight. 
uh, <laughs> here. Uh, Dean notices this and tries to get Rusty. He's like, Dad, <laughs> you know, like, you know, this Rusty is uh, having a cucumber bath <laughs> uh, and tries to get out his wristwatch. And he's like, Oh, did I text you or send you a picture of my junk? And it's both. Uh, is the answer. <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, horrible. So the Geobot jumps out and he's shooting laser cannons. Uh, Helper is feeling left out. So he goes into his very hilarious, just like Swiss army bot mode. I, I love Swiss, I love battle helper. <laughs> so funny. Um, Hank kicks at the, the pool window, trying to wake up the girl, uh, which he does. And it turns out she has gills. Yeah. Uh, and she's real pretty. He's, he's sweet on her. Yeah. 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 And he, he gives her a little wave. Hello. But this causes him to drop off. He was using his old jacket. He was using his jacket as a, as a zip line. So he starts plummeting, plummeting down and we meet the, uh, the fourth member of the Crusaders action, uh, league, which is night yeah. Dick. And I love how yeah. he speaks in like promo monologue in Batman <laughs> promo. Yeah. Like he just does his origin. And he's yeah. just like, the night I became night dick. <laughs> and Hank's just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like a combination. Uh, is it, he's a combination. Um, oh gosh, Knight Rider and, uh, and Batman kind of guy, but he's styled yeah. after, uh, almost like, a, a kind of like the spirit a little bit. He's got the, got, got the hat and the, uh, the domino mask. He, yeah. He looks like the spirit and narrates like Batman. Yes. You yeah. know, basically, uh, but you know, very fun. <laughs> uh, Back up at the penthouse, Dr. And Mrs. The Monarch is hesitant to do something. You know, uh, it's still, they're still misdirecting, making it sound like uh, Wide Whale wants sex. Yeah. And uh, he's like, your, your husband is a mere six, whereas I'm a full 10. You yeah. Know? Which wouldn't be that impressive on a guy. I'm not to shame him, but he's a, you know, just a, a he's a giant man. You don't think a 10-inch dick would be impressive on Wide Whale? Is that what I, he's, basic, he's basically double the height of a regular person. 10 inches is long though, dude. Like that's a logistical nightmare for any I, it, human cavity. Okay. Sure. Sure. I'm just, uh, I, I, I guess, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, it just, uh, it seems, uh, I'd also like to point out there's nothing mere about six. <laughs> true. It's true. Average on six. Like yeah. we grew up and we were told the lie that dicks are six inches. Yeah. And people self-reported that. And that's never been true. Right. Yeah. Not that they don't exist. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I remember when mine was only six inches when I was a baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I, my penis is average size the best. But the uh, the the idea of a six inch cock was did a lot of damage to a lot of boys. It did, yes. I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but um, but you know they're talking about like the 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 guild's uh, uh, like danger rating system, which we're going to learn more about here. Yes. Um, back in the elevator, the, the pirate captain is demanding more darts, but the monarch only has so much ammo. <laughs> I'm out, you freak. Like, <laughs> you know, why are you holding out on me? Uh, so 21 just knocks him out the old fashioned way with head trauma. Yeah. Uh, fallen archer up on the roof. Fallen archer is having his arrows come back, which hop into his quiver. <laughs> so weird. And Warriana has Brock in a uh, truth lasso. Uh, this relies on some wonder woman knowledge. Mm-hmm. Uh, wonder woman is already a bondage superhero who ties you up makes you tell the truth uh and this is the uh brock is just like i want to do you (laughs) mom i like a big gal (laughs) yeah i don't care about the boob thing uh it's just that's his his truth Uh, the later relationship they have has a uh a very of the time butt stuff joke Mm mm-hmm but I end up liking their their little relationship. Yeah, yeah. And how it evolves. It's nice to uh, have him bounce back from the toxic Molotov well, thing. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Night Dick delivers Hank to the rooftop, and Rusty walks out and is like, uh, you know, get that Brock. He's uh, Rusty tells Stars and Garters that Brock and the killer karate bot are actually his bodyguards. Yeah. They're not rescuing him. Of so this is this is a big a uh, big misunderstanding uh the actual danger is in fact downstairs hatred is uh frog walking for, uh, uh 21 and uh and the monarch out of the building uh, and dr mrs the monarch rolls up and says you know hey uh you need to hand them over to us you know don't give them to, to the police this is a guilt matter they're poaching out wide whales exclu- exclusive arching claim yeah and that's the twist that's what we're, wide whale was getting her to do yeah is sign over rusty uh hedra also punches 21 kind of closing that whole thing out yeah you may be happy because mm-hmm. uh you know 21 i'm also mad at how 21 has changed yeah <laughs> uh you know they drive off and the monarch's like oh that's such a good bluff you know <laughs> thanks honey we got some bad uh, news yeah. yeah we got some bad news 
Um, the, uh, the post credits, the, the real post credits, stars and garters apologize for the mix up. And they're like, Oh, don't you have somebody who can come clean this up <laughs> only on the gold plan? You're telling uh, me you don't have a captain leave. spackle. <laughs> yeah. Captain spackle damage control. Yeah. Uh, Hank tells Brock, he thinks he met a girl. And then, uh, we cut over to helper who is staying next to the J bot and pushes him over the balcony. <laughs> killing the J bot. The problem, I mean, is that the first outright cruel thing helper has done? Helper got jealous of Gardo, if I recall. He did, didn't but he? Yeah. He had no ability to fight back against Gardo. Right. Huh. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's just know. weird just weird to think about Helper ice cold killing a dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Helper fucking heartless. Helper kills. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, Harper starts with the children because it makes the adults weaker. <laughs> Jesus. Um, the, the, uh, and then there's a real epilogue that ties everything together that they only put online because of dumb yeah. webisode reasons, I guess. Yeah. Weirdly, it's only on, like, I, I couldn't find this on YouTube. You had to send me a Facebook link to it, uh, on, like, yeah. the Adult Swim Facebook page. Uh, but uh, it picks up, you know, the next day, you know, doing the breakfast thing again. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dean is reading about uh, the falling J-Bot on his J-Pad. Uh, they say it landed on a homeless vet. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's 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 hatred. hatred yeah uh helper gives his uh dean his breakfast it's this horrible omelet like he's not as good <laughs> at it uh and and rusty's like no reading at the dinner table mm-hmm. uh hank walks in and he looks he's got a steve mcqueen look yeah a racing jacket and new haircut he's gonna go learn the value of a dollar uh and uh brock's like all right you know uh <laughs> take the thing he's like yeah no i found one of those steve mcqueen jackets and don't worry i didn't buy it new I bought it second hand. I, I didn't even I didn't even use my credit card, uh, yeah. which makes you think, oh, we got like a consignment shop or a thrift sh- thrift shop or something like that. No, the actual story. Rusty looks down at his J pad uh, and sees an article about <laughs> Hank, this billionaire wonder boy uh, who uh, makes Hollywood auction history by buying Steve McQueen's actual outfit from Christie's with a giant check <laughs> yep. with one of the giant checks from the checkbook <laughs> a little pin there and he's like Hank. Uh, but this this you know puts the pin on him having to go get a job all these things that actually end up mattering yeah yeah you know uh in this thing it is a better ending than the one they did yep uh, yeah and that's a hostile makeover a that's fun good episode a fun episode know. It like it, it it moves it moves things forward. It does a lot of work, you know, reestablishing and putting stuff in in place, which could be joyless or could be a slog, but actually is not. Uh, it yeah. is it it is nice and uh, light and funny, and is a good uh, is a good indication of what's uh, waiting for us this season. Yeah, I'm going to go as far as to say that. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, feel free. Anyone can can disparage us if they want to. Mm-hmm. But I uh, I really like uh, the superhero shit that happens in this. Mm-hmm. Um, the weird parts in the book where like they're like ah you know having superheroes didn't make sense for this. I always thought it did make sense basically, mm-hmm. and I am really happy to uh, to have Avengers stand-ins and shit. Yeah, because uh, I like that stuff. No, you're and right. I like the Brown Widow. I like Brown Widow. I like the Crusaders Action League. I think they're fun characters. Yeah, you know you're you, you, you know, there, there's some basicness to you. You know you're into your Marvel and you know oh, compare yeah, no, everything yeah, to I'm, Harry I'm Potter. Yeah. A baby, <laughs> like uh, you know, as an idiot who prefers this to other uh, things that would be called films. Yes, yeah. Uh, you know who who watches big budget movies. Yeah, I recognize that I am essentially a Morlock. Yeah, you know? no, I, I mean, I mean, it's I, it's just really cute how you think that's culture uh, is yeah, uh, is, the, is yeah. the way that I kind of take that. So I should probably be in a Dragon Ball. <laughs> which is actually culture not kids media you know, the, kids, the kids media that i like is bad bit, bit, but bit. the kids media that people on twitter like is good <laughs> weirdly i thought that was a shot at me not that i no. like talk about dragon ball a lot but i've been on a dragon ball rewatch <laughs> so. you also you don't seriously disparage me for liking marvel shit no so that there we go uh, my, my my point is like there's legitimate criticisms like you could make a, a point about the monoculture mm-hmm. but also i think a lot of times people are just like my kid stuff is better than your kid shit yeah, yeah. it's very frustrating when somebody <laughs> is like you know this is dumb but one piece <laughs> that's hard. I'm like, it's, it, it's 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 we, all we're all adults you like kid media it's fine yeah it's all pg-13 you know? it's okay yeah. like who gives yeah. a shit 
You know, actually, no, 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 that's bad though. I'm, <laughs> I'm more into the, the remake of, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It drives me nuts. I mean, apart from like the broader, like cultural or, or even some of our facetiousness there, like they have affection for superhero stuff. So for them to be able to play with it plausibly, you know, in this space, yeah. it feels good. They're, they're, they're walking the walk. Like it, yeah. it feels authentic to me, a fan, Yeah, which adds to the humor. Right. Of it. You know, and, and that's what I'm, I'm drawing it on. Mm-hmm. And why should why should we just get good pun name villains? Let's get some good pun name heroes yeah. up in here too. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's 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 their superpower. Mm-hmm. It's it's also it's Jackson's uh, heritage from mm-hmm. the Tick. Like it's uh, I don't know I, I'm sounding so defensive about it. I'm just happy they went back to it. Yeah, uh, it's just because I'm anticipating people online yelling at me about being into Marvel stuff, yeah. which doesn't happen that often because I stopped talking about it on there <laughs> uh, <laughs> because it did used to. Uh, it's pretty frustrating. Yeah, uh, yeah, you can't talk about anything. You do a non sequitur thing. Like I was talking about, uh, I made a tweet about the Batman movie, or I was like, "Boy, Batman really biffed that one." And I wasn't saying it was a bad movie. <laughs> uh-huh. it's, it's a movie about Batman doing a horrible job. Oh yeah, he he, he like, just it, ruins it. Yeah, he makes everything yeah, if you worse. Watch him fail for three hours. Like that's the <laughs> Batman movie. And someone just out of nowhere is like, "It's a lot better than what they're putting out of Mar- like the cookie cutter stuff they're putting out of Marvel." And Jesus like, fucking Christ! It? it doesn't have to be a culture war thing. God damn it! <laughs> yeah, your silence on this is deafening. Like, go, man. Settle down, Beavis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's. You said this about something else the other day, but it's like such penny ante shit. <laughs> you know? Who cares? Uh, I, man, is that really just like you really don't have anything bigger to worry about? <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck, um, man, <laughs> silly shit, silly. Uh, I think this, that's all. Is, I- this is dumb, but Star Wars, Star Wars is good. <laughs> Big brain stuff for adults. It's owned by the fucking same company, god damn. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> like it's it just you know, well actually the differences are quite you know, it's just come on. It's just man. Mm. I I was this came up uh, recently, the Dragon Ball thing, because I, I certainly wasn't slamming you. No, yeah. But yeah. people keep calling one of the attacks in Elder Ring a, a Dragon Ball thing, and I'm like, it's just a laser beam. Uh-huh. I am not going to give Dragon Ball a laser beam. <laughs> they do not get to like squat on that. Yeah, yeah. You know? It's just a uh, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, anywho, anyway, <laughs> yeah. T- t- put fifteen seconds on the clock. <laughs> uh, it's, but uh, yeah, this is a great, good episode. I'm really excited about this season. Same. Uh, and we hope you're excited too. If you want to help us, you can go to patreoncom slash TV and um, kick mm-hmm. us a few bucks a month. It is greatly appreciated. Um, in addition, uh, you can leave a rating or review on iTunes or whatever podcast directory you happen to get us from. Yes. Yeah, uh, we would really appreciate that. Um, what else? Listen to our other shows. Mm-hmm. We would really like that. Uh, support us on Patreon. Leave rings, reviews, all those things we just said. Tell your friends. Uh, that's basically it, I believe. Come back next week. Uh, Come back next stay week. along for the ride because uh, we guarantee you're going to end like this season. Yeah. Uh, and uh, until next time, go, go Team Venture. venture.